Hi there, welcome. Come right on in. My name's Arthelene Rippey. The program's Homekeepers. And we are so glad to be here, so glad you are there. And I believe every day that we'll have new viewers, and so all of you new viewers out there, uh, welcome. Hope you'll become a regular. You know, uh, you'll find out later in the program that uh, when we do a recipe, we offer you the opportunity to um, have it. it. Won't cost you anything. Uh, most people email their request, and I can't tell you how much I enjoy the nice little remarks you make and uh, the notes of encouragement when you email. And I wish I had the time to really respond to every one of them, but that's not possible because actually we're woefully under, understaffed in this program. But I want you to know I appreciate it and I take it to heart. There's nothing in the world like a word of encouragement. And it would be a good idea every morning to get up and determine to uh, encourage someone. There's plenty to bring you down. There's a lot of bad news in this world, but I want you to know from, from the heart that I really do appreciate your kind words and so forth. We're continuing uh, program week with the guest I had on in the last program, uh, Carlin Maddox, who wrote A Path Revealed. And I guess to put it just simply, his wife at a very early age, the age of 50, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and lived another 17 years. And in his effort, in Carlin's effort to find help, find something for his wife to make her better, he encountered God in a way that uh, never, never, never dreamed. And it was from the pathway of his Presbyterian church that he'd gone to most of his life uh, to a monastery. And, you know, God has a really big kingdom. He's got children under different banners, you know, different uh, denominations and so forth. And uh, so we're going to pick up where we left off on the last program. Uh, so glad to have Carlin in this, this book. I have found gems in here that really serving the Lord for a long time, I didn't know. And I'm so glad that I know them now. It kind of enriches your experience with the Lord when that happens. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make a chicken salad. Uh, you put it on a croissant. But you know what? There's absolutely no end to the way you can fix a chicken salad. I have one that I think is the very, very best. And maybe I'll bring it out again. I did it several years ago in this program. And I think it's the best. But this one looks good. We have had guests come on here and fix chicken salad. And some of them were a warm chicken salad. And it's just something that uh, you can be free to put anything in it you want. This one looks really good. So um, we will put it together and try it. See, see if it is good. And I again want to offer you praying circles around your children. As I mentioned on the last program, we continue, continue to get a request for this book. And um, that warms my heart because that tells me you're really interested. And if there was ever a day and age that we need to be prayerful for our children, boy, I pray for mine every day. And I pray God direct them, correct them when they need it. And I'm praying for two grandsons that God will bring them godly wives. They're grown men now and that he'll bring them wives that will serve the Lord and want to establish a Christian home. It's wonderful. We serve a God that we can just kind of lay it out and um, he's faithful. So this book by Mark Batterson, a wonderful pastor in Washington, D.C., is yours for any gift. The information is on your screen. Uh, you can call that 800 number if you'd like to purchase things that way or write to me at box 6922 Clearwater, Florida 33758 and uh, we will be glad to get it out to you. And I know that if you're a mother or a grandmother, father or grandfather, that this is important to you. So I hope you'll take time to um, get it while we do still have it. And here's Stephanie again. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, you, we've had two or three recently that she made faces and, well, I see we did the tea biscuits. They weren't that great. They weren't that and, great. And then what else did we do? That the was, sweet potato fries. The sweet potato. She didn't like that. And you weren't sure about the German potato salad. She didn't like anything. Yesterday wasn't a good. <laughs> That's why we take those shows. However. This um, is going to be good. You, uh, do you ever make 
chicken salad. You know, not as often as I should. And I think the grapes is what's going to really give it a good yummy Oh, yeah. Cake. The one I was bragging about has a lot of grapes in it and uh, almonds and mm. everything. I'll, I'll, that sounds good. We'll do it again. Bring and, and it my, out. Mine has a little tiny bit of curry in it. That's mm. what sets it apart. That would be good. So. Okay, just okay, go so for it. I'm going to um, do these ingredients first. Mm -hmm. I have a half a cup of mayo. I'm just going to mix these all up and then add the chicken to it. Is this a rotisserie chicken? Because mm -hmm. that that's this is the perfect recipe for a good rotisserie yeah, chicken. Yeah. No, I don't think that is, but oh, okay. it would be perfect. Yeah. Now a this is the curious. Cup, that's a third a cup curious of butter ingredient milk. to me. Yes. Um, Who thought of the buttermilk? Right. Two teaspoons and lemons. of lemon. And we mm. have a teaspoon of dill weed, and mm -hmm. a teaspoon of dried parsley flakes, and we have a quarter eat. Oh. <laughs> What in the world? Do you want it in there? Yes, please. <laughs> and then Pray we, for her, please. Please. And then we have a quarter teaspoon each of salt, garlic powder, and pepper. You my, know, there's you know, some really brain. great seasonings in this. Yes. So I'm going to mix this up real quick. And croissants. I mean, who doesn't love a good croissant? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I like the way you say it. Croissant. You sound very French. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah. A redneck French person. I'm just oh, very anxious. That just looks like a good dressing for salad. Oh, it is a good dressing. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, that looks so good. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to put some chicken in here. This is uh, this two is cups, two I cups think. of chicken, but again, this is a perfect rotisserie chicken meal. You mm -hmm. don't even have to cook the chicken. Just buy the rotisserie chicken. Those made. rotisserie chickens are really a bargain. Half a cup of the grated Parmesan. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, celery. Celery. I'm trying to give. Uh, I don't see that on there. I don't see celery. I think it's on about there. a half a cup. Okay. <laughs> and we have a, a little bit of green onion. We've got cashews. Half a cup of cashews. Half a cup of chopped cashews, which is going to add a nice crunch. There's no way this can be bad. A cup of the seedless red grapes mm -hmm. halved. That's what oh I'm my. excited about. Oh my! Isn't that beautiful? About. Yes. Here, you want you want to be my sous chef and just move all this? I That'd love. Awesome. Um, Colorful food. Yes. Now, let me tell you, this is one of those things you want this to sit in your refrigerator. And you want these flavors you want it to get married. To get married. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you want them to all come together. It's awfully pretty. Tomorrow, this will be the best chicken salad. Right now, it'll be yummy, but. I brought a couple of ways to eat it here, so we'll put a little on it. Mm, and then, uh, this is going to be good. Maybe we finally got something that Stephanie, Stephanie will like. Yeah. I'm really not that super picky, but... No, I know you are. There's just some things I don't mm -hmm. like. Oh, boy. Look how beautiful. Mm. Is that so good? Mm-hmm. I want to try. Is that your fork? Yeah. That is delicious. Mm. Okay. Finally! Something that is a likes. winner. Mm-hmm. Mm. But mm. Said, let, it sit, let it sit around a little while. It has crunch, uh -huh. it has texture, it has flavor. Mm. I will get mine yes. out and um, well, we'll do it again. Okay, you're going to have to beat this one because this is super good. I think I will, but mm. um, it's been years since we did it. So Okay, let's bring it out. Let's have a chicken salad showdown. <laughs> well, I remember uh, Phyllis Benegas, her, wife, her husband was a youth director for mm -hmm. a whole state and... Um, she came in and she made a uh, warm chicken oh, salad. Oh, that would be good too. Mm -hmm. So, well, we'll say this is my chicken salad, and then you bring your chicken okay. salad, okay? okay? And we'll have a show. But now. You, we'll have people taste it. If you it. make that yours, you're not going to admit that mine's better. Well, no, but Would we'll, you? we'll ask others. <laughs> okay, we'll be honest. Okay, we'll have Brooke. Yeah. Okay. Brooke's All right, my friend. No. <laughs> now, <laughs> we are going to uh, continue uh, talking about the book by my guest, Carlin Maddox. And that's coming up, but the information is coming on your screen. It's, this is a chicken salad, and it's got a longer name than that, but uh, that'll be on the screen for you. And uh, it's absolutely free. We'll be glad to send it to you. Okay, stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to Arthelene at rippy.org.
right, my uh, guest carried over from the last program is uh, Carlin Maddox. He has written the book, A Path Revealed. And uh, to give you the short version, his wife is diagnosed with Alzheimer's and he went on a real journey to uh, uh, get help for her. But a uh, journey took him places that you never dreamed, right? Uh -uh. You even uh -uh. ended up in Australia, right? Even ended up in Australia. Before I get into that, I may want to take some of that chicken salad home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we tell our guests if you're good. Okay. We give you some. Uh, you were good last time, so you, well, we'll, I think there's we'll, a... We'll see. And the, uh, um, we will give you some. Yeah, this... Uh, this I, I call it an odyssey as much as you're a journey. Right. Uh -huh. uh, an odyssey in the sense of... You wind up, find yourself in a strange, bizarre, surreal kind of land mm -hmm. like Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And uh, in hindsight, I saw that we were trying to get home. Mm -hmm. And the home being into God's heart. And, um, but anyway, I, uh, it, uh, yes, and went to a lot of places. A lot of surprises. A lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, total surprises. Uh, it was not planned. Mm -hmm. There was nothing planned along the way. I was introduced by mutual friends to a... Um, an Anglican canon, a uh, minister out in Aust Sydney, Australia. Uh, we began a correspondence by telephone and fax. He had a healing ministry there in Sydney. I read a book of his, uh, uh, and it's called Your Healing is Within You, and uh, also heard tapes of his, and I was just really intrigued by his approach and how he did all this. When my wife had a seizure, uh, about two years into our friendship with this canon, um, How long would that be since she was diagnosed? Uh, How far down the I, road? I met him in 1999 by phone. Mm -hmm. I just, and um, so a, a year or two after that, uh, she had a seizure. And I said, I've just got to go out and see Jim. I've got to see what he's doing. I've got to talk to him in person. He told me, Carlin, I can't tell you any more than what I've already told you. Mm -hmm. I said, Jim, something tells me I've just got to come see you. He said, okay. And he set aside a whole week for me and was uh, both a spiritual guide and a tour guide in Sydney for me. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, as on the last program, we talked about Francis McNutt, mm -hmm. Agnes Sanford, and uh, they have very significant uh, healing meetings. Now, the, was this gentleman in Australia the one who talked to you about the power of forgiveness, that that was such a oh, intricate yeah. part yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've always heard forgive, but this one hit me right between the it, eyes. It, it hit me too. I, I mean, I sort of in my growing up in Christianity, I, I thought forgiveness was a nice, pious virtue that uh, get around to. But it became very clear talking to him that this was a life and death kind of. Uh, it, it it's either it it, it can. Uh, bring good health if you forgive and, and resentment can give you bad health. Um, and, and then I was reading a, a book about that time by a Frederick Beekner who was a, an author, who's an author and a Presbyterian minister. Could I just read that excerpt to you? Do you have just... Sure. Um, I mean, this just really struck me. This comes from uh, Beekner's uh, book called Wishful Thinking. It says, of the sev seven deadly sins, anger is possibly the most fun. To lick your wounds, to smack your lips over grievances long past, to roll over your tongue the prospect of bitter confrontation still to come, to savor to the last toothsome morsel both the pain you are given and the pain you are given, giving back. In many ways, it is a feast fit for a king. The chief drawback is that what you are wolfing down is yourself. The skeleton at the feast is you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, those together, it just it became very clear. Uh, we, uh, by rote, you know, we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But um, the power of forgiveness is, is really intricate to good health. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's been proven by... Mm -hmm. Uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, so forth. But um, y you told the story of forgiving your father, and he was dead. Right. And I truly, I truly believe that. I, I believe that 
uh, the Holy Spirit can reveal things to you that, mm -hmm. you know, you've carried this grudge, you've carried this unforgiveness for so long, and that you can be rid of that even though you can't see the person personally. Right, right. I, um, um, that hap that's happened on several fronts. It's not so much, I mean, I don't know what's happening on their end of, the, right. <laughs> of it, but on my end, it's just clearing up a lot of drudge and stuff that's in, inside of mm -hmm. you. I mean, I, the, the one incident I relate in relation to my father is he, he was a good man, but he was a distant man. Mm -hmm. A lot of men out of my dad's generation coming out of World War II were emotionally distant. And I remember when I was 10 or 11, I was just, I would be practicing Elvis's move. He, Elvis was just coming on the scene and I was doing the swivel hips and the pouted lips and, and uh, had an air guitar. I would like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one time when I felt I was proficient, I just, I, um, I said, hey dad, what's this? And I started swinging out like Elvis mm -hmm. and dad just pointed his finger at me and says, stop that. I don't want to ever see that from you again. I want you to, do you understand what I'm saying? And I said, well, I guess I do. And I ran up to my room and I just, I didn't even think, I hadn't thought of that in Isn't that 40 years. Mm -hmm. And then as I was just taking the time to meditate, this just came up and I just had to deal with it. Uh, I have a cough drop here, so don't, uh, don't let it <laughs> bother you. Um, as parents, we have no idea that we can inflict a wound like that mm -hmm. just in our daily uh, living. It, as parents, we ought to think a little bit more, but also that you carried that wound for so many years. And it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal it. Um, I didn't even know it was a wound. Mm -hmm. I, mean, mm -hmm. I mean, just, but it obviously was something that had to, I, I mean, after, after I went through some serious forgiveness in my mind and before, God with um, this uh, with dad I mean my whole feelings for dad just began to unfold in a, in, in a warm loving kind of way and interestingly uh, I'd, I'd heard a minister over in Orlando talk about it, says you know oftentimes our feelings for our Heavenly Father are shaped by our feelings for our earthly father which a lot of people have heard that of mm -hmm. but I, mean, I, I began to sense a warmness with God the Father that I just never really felt before. Yeah, that's uh, why your book is so well named, A Path Revealed. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned a couple times, he's wanting help for his wife who has Alzheimer's and God is very interested in you becoming like him and what he wants you to be. I think uh, we forget as Christians this isn't home, that he's preparing us for something else. We're just traveling through here, and he wants us to make us like his son. I want to put the website up for um, my friend, and it's on the screen now. You can get the book through the website. I suppose it's on Amazon and it's on, those kind you, of places. You can get any any store. I mean, it can be ordered through almost any store. And it's called A Path Revealed, and um, it's, so if you're looking for it, it really has just every few pages, it has a gem. Like we talked about last time, the Catholic nuns used, you know, consider the difference of willfulness and willingness. That hit me right between the eyes. So, mm -hmm. um, what the Lord has, uh, you know, revealed to you, now we can reveal it to a lot of people through your book. Okay, um, your pastor Lacey, who's mm -hmm. Presbyterian pastor here in St. Petersburg. What, he was talking to God at the Skyway Bridge, which is a very beautiful bridge here. And he said, um, God spoke and said, all your suffering, all your friends' suffering will ultimately dissolve into my utter and complete joy. Mm -hmm. Until then, you must permit me to capture you with my grace and my comfort. Mm -hmm. That is powerful. It is. It is. Yeah. And... Um, then Lacey, Lacey had called me up. I was at the office and said, Carlin, we need to meet. And I said, okay, I'm, let's talk right now. And he said, no, I got to meet in person. Mm -hmm. And so we um, uh, made a time the next day to have lunch down at uh, a, a park by the Tampa, mm -hmm. by Tampa Bay called Demon's Landing. And, mm -hmm. um, and so he shared that with me. And then he said, 
the, the reason I'm here is, is Carlin, I mean, Lacey, what I've shared with you right now, I want you to go and take it to Carlin. And that just floored me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just when I heard that, uh, uh, we just parted at that point, shook hands, didn't say another word, and it's just the rest of the afternoon I was just sort of in shock and awe. Yeah, um, what a great answer, but it's not exactly what you were looking for. No. You were looking for help for your wife. And what I get from this is God is saying constantly, I want you to know me. I want you I, to know me. I, oh, that's why I'm sending you. That was, that was the arc of this whole story, mm -hmm, just, mm -hmm. of just not really loving God and having a, an experiential love with mm -hmm. God to sort of where it is now. And it's an ongoing kind of thing. I mean, it's not just something you get and, and you suddenly have got it forever, but it's just still just building a relationship. And um, yeah. Well, I've often thought when I get to heaven, I really want to meet the Apostle Paul. It's very fascinating. And he said, oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Mm. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'll take the resurrection. <laughs> that sounds good. But well, I'm not really going after the fellowship, you know, of his suffering. Yeah, yeah. The, um, well, I mean, the subtitle of my book, Path Revealed, is how hope, love, and joy found us deep in a maze called Alzheimer's. And somehow through this process, not just me, but Martha and our three children were, were able, were lifted, uh, transcended above just the symptoms that we were having to deal with. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. uh, what... Now, uh, you've talked about how, you know, her whole personhood would kind of diminish. Uh, that first seizure was so difficult. What was it like when you came to the point that you... Um, placed her in a nursing home. I had to do that with my mom, it's hard. That was another one of those low moments, mm -hmm. hard moments. Mm -hmm. And um, we placed her into a Jewish nurse, nursing home here called Menorah Manor, and it's just one of the absolute best that uh, the care that they give. But still, that first, tr that transition into the nursing home, that was tough. Mm -hmm. I, I want to read something um, that stood out to me. It says, God continues to show our children, and uh, toward the end of the book, you say how everybody's life was enriched by this. Uh, and me, that, af that a wasting disease does not have to define who we are. You are not a tragedy called Al Alzheimer's. You are perfect and whole within our Father's heart and mind. And yet, I've asked myself many times, if that's true, why hasn't Martha returned to a normal, natural state of mind and body? And ultimately, my answer is, I don't know. That, to me, is a uh, very mature Christian attitude. I knew Catherine Kuhlman, and she was, uh, you'd put her in the faith healer category. I knew her. I saw, I saw miracles. I saw it. Mm -hmm. And I always liked, because she would come out first service. You know, she might be here for a couple services. And she would say, I'm just praying that someday everybody will be healed. Mm -hmm. And she said, when I think about that, and the question is, why are they not all healed? She said, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And there's such, a, such an honesty there. Mm -hmm. It's only, only God knows. He's the only one that can possibly know that. Well, uh, we all need to learn to live with paradox, mm -hmm. uh, just op opposites. And, mm -hmm. and uh, and realize that that's what we got to live with. Mm -hmm. um, another crow, because at, at the top of the program uh, yesterday, uh, we were talking about what that sister Elaine said to you, think about willfulness, willingness. And uh, toward the end of the book, you write, Will, willfulness is grounded in fear. Mm -hmm. Willingness is grounded in faith. Mm -hmm. That's the hard part. <laughs> it is. That's... I can't say any more. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so true. To me, God got right down with you to the nitty-gritty of Absolutely. knowing Him. 
absolutely. Not knowing about him, not reading, but, but to uh, really know him. And looking back, um, you write about the effect on you, on your children. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you thank God for this experience? Um, for much of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I mean, I, one of the things with Alzheimer's that uh, people are people who have mental disabilities. They're sort of uh, stigmatized and mm -hmm. put aside by our society. Mm -hmm. But I I saw within Martha a spiritual connection that could not be verbalized, could not be uh, shown physically. Uh, I mean, I would go into Menorah Manor and uh, about five days, five or six days a week, and Martha could be curled up in different positions. And I'd uh, take her hand, and and she'd sort of pull away, maybe. And um, I say, Martha, hi, this is Carlin. I went over to see Olivia, and she just uh, this was our young granddaughter, and um, um, and talking to her a little bit. And then I would just sort of start getting quiet and and meditate, and then Martha would just start relaxing and just be in, in a very relaxed spirit and whatever else during this time. And I just felt a presence there at those times that I rarely have felt before or since. It's just one of those one of those things. I I truly believe, uh, and I mentioned last, I've been some, through some awful stuff, but I wouldn't know the Lord like I do now. Mm -hmm. And that that is that is the goal. Mm -hmm. And He He uses those things. Mm -hmm. for his ultimate glory, and that is, as the Apostle Paul said, oh, that I may know him. And uh, we are out of time now, but you've really outlined some wonderful truths in here. And the truth is that through it all, he wants you to know him. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. he, he knows you for sure, but he wants you to know him, not just know about him and not just hear sermons about him. Thanks for writing a really good book. Thank you. I hope uh, that you got the information if you'd like to get the book we are out of time but join me next time please remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper god bless you if you should miss a homekeepers program you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com click on ctn programs and then on homekeepers